Hey, 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 how's it going, everybody? It's so sad. I had an interesting video, so I thought, but the GoPro wasn't recording. Oh my god, I almost rear ended a car because I got distracted by construction zone. And man, if I didn't get that, that would have been an epic video because that was not planned. And then I talked about how you, you know, how easily you can get distracted by a construction guy who has a sign. And then there's a piece of equipment that started turning, and I kind of went around as I came back in I you know focused on in front of me and the light must have changed to red and the cars were stopped and I almost hit it I swerved to the left whoosh, around and of course then I had to get in I probably looked like a total ass to the people I had cut in but you know they didn't see what just occurred I'm hoping my wife was not in that line because she had just left the house and of course I wasn't paying attention to that aspect of anything at that time afterwards I was like oh I wonder if one of the cars were hers and she was like what's going on but anyways I'm out here on the 2022 GPX Moto FSE 300 R got 188 miles on it now and the bike's running good I got the tusk shifter so it's all you know more room here space for your foot got the highway dirt bike guard set up with the dual folding mirrors so runners can you know have mirrors have a better shifter on this side of the bike i have a homemade kydex plate clutch cover because if a runner does tip it over at least it's somewhat protected and you know i charge them a little bit for the clutch cover a little bit for the kydex and we'd be good to go if it gets still smashed but they can still putts out and then i have on the tusk adventure front tire more dual sport ish i got on the trackmaster 2 rear tire seems to be holding up pretty well so far uh, not a lot of miles on it it's amazingly the second runner he went 21 miles first runner went like Oh, I want to say like 60 or something. I do have OHV tag, very important. I also have one I haven't put on for this bike for Utah. So you could run it, you could take it out to Utah, you could ride it and have a lot of fun. That's the idea behind setting these up. I set them not just for me, but so I can run them. And I like the suspension on this bike. I like the overall handling. I like the braking. Seems to be good now and dialed in. And yeah, it seems like it just works. You know, it's on. It's on there. Ooh, who would help that I noticed I was in first? Woohoo! And I had just went over this to end the video that I thought I was recording, but apparently wasn't recording. So I feel like a fool for talking that whole length. So we're gonna start out this video besides that aspect of going up. And there we go. So it will do stuff like that. The skill, rider skill level is the variable. I think most bikes will go up that, but it scares people because they see it and it looks like it's up and down, but honestly, it's like slick rock and there is a slight, slight slant to it. So you got the balance rock here, pretty cool. This is Mount Herman Road. So if you rent this from me, you can just ride right from my place up Mount Herman Road and go explore and test out one of these GPX motorbikes. It's really convenient, so you get a little city riding, you get a little road, dirt road riding, and if you want, you can go uh, find trails around here. And there are Jeep trails, and then we'll go off on a few of those, so you can uh, you know, see it on a little bit harder terrain. Most of my renters so far have just been dual sport so they just come up here or the, the second guy actually hauled it out to rainbow falls with his girlfriend who had her own bike and i'm sure they hit atv trails but roads atv trails and he brought it back in one piece 21 miles so i'm guessing he had a pretty good day it's pretty easy to rent from us uh, we have a variety of bikes. We have two 300s. We have, and this is the four stroke. Some people, you know, GPX, they have that 
300 two stroke coming out they get confused this is the four stroke we also have a 450R and a 250E all four strokes for now we will be adding some two strokes of various makes in probably end of summer once they're ready to go we'll have to see how long it takes us but they'll be plated also the Colorado HV tag and then if you're going to use it on trails you go ahead and pay the little extra on rider share depending how we have that set up and yeah it just costs a little extra if you're riding it off-road if you wreck it and you took it off-road rider share is going to be coming after you if you didn't pay to ride it off-road <laughs> so you know and we go through them because they're trusted they're reliable they have a reputation of actually paying out any claims and honestly it seems like they take a huge cut of the pie for us so don't think we're on a few bikes getting rich here I don't think you, you would ever get rich unless you had like 30 bikes and they're out every single day yeah, that's not gonna happen I don't think not really my end game plan for this I would like to actually honestly start a retail space and, and maybe sell these bikes maybe sell um, gear and what have you from affordable to name brand gear and, and just have a good friendly experience because I've been around long enough bought enough things from places and I personally the local dealers they're old-fashioned shysters really and it's sad um, we do have a good place up in Denver performance cycle but you know that's up in Denver we have more than the population to have a, a place down here that is that is just as good we'll see if this is the stepping stone to get into that however I'm just blown away by this bike it's reliable it's cheap it's like five thousand dollars fifty five hundred dollars something like that I'll have to look up the price I'll put it up on the screen and you know I had it shipped to me maybe you have a dealer near you that sells GPX and you can ask them how much it is realize setup fee I think it's well worth paying somebody to set a bike up after having done it three bikes now I'm like you know I will not complain about a setup fee it's a pain in the butt that they do right now knowing that it's a pain in the butt knowing that dealers can charge quite a bit of money they can be cheap reasonable on setup fees to what seems like way too much money you know some dealers you know want the sky and those uh if I had a problem after paying a really high setup fee, I would definitely have the right, I believe, to really complain like, hey, why did this bolt fall out? Why didn't you lock tight this? Why didn't you do this? You know, why didn't you fix the zip ties or put better zip ties on? You know, I paid for a setup fee. That meant you went over it with a fine tooth cone, especially as the price of that setup fee goes up. It means you should have taken even that much care putting it together. Now, somebody experienced, granted, putting this together probably probably does take them a few hours, but you know, they have the lowest probably kid in the shop putting it, putting the bike together, I would say typically. I mean, because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to put one of these together out of the crate. So you could essentially be just paying somebody 15 bucks an hour and they're going to charge you, you know, they're going to charge you 300, 400, 600 bucks. Well, as it goes up, I expect that the, they did more stuff, like maybe changing out these zip ties on this bike, because they're very, they're very bad trimming the zip ties, so you don't have all the sharp ends, because in China, apparently, they just willy-nilly cut them, even though it wouldn't take any longer to cut them flush. So I changed a lot of them out to name brand tie wrap zip ties, you know, they actually have a rated brake thing, braking strength 
pounds, man. And for the ones I use, were 50 pounds each. So, they'll, they'll, and they're UV protected and all that, so they're not gonna get all brittle. And I cut them flush. So when I reach into something, I'm not coming out with like blood on my hand because of a zip tie. If you've worked on stuff, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little attention in detail like that. So if I'm paying a huge setup fee, I would expect all that to be done. I would expect Loctite to be put on everything. If I'm paying a place and they're like, oh, we're just gonna include the setup, I'm gonna just figure they did not do all the extra stuff. <laughs> I mean, you have to use a little common sense. There's a reason why it was the price it is. However, reliability. These bikes have been proven to be reliable. It's the NC250 300 motor. This is the 300, but if you're doing a uh, Amazon, if you're doing a search on Amazon for like fuel filters or Alibaba or eBay, you type in NC250. And you can find a lot of parts for these engines from case covers. I mean, I could have bought a case cover. I just wanted to play around with the Kydex. And honestly, this cover is stronger than the uh, plastic molded cover that has no RTV that's just bolted on. You want RTV behind the cover, so there's cushioning there. So, and if it did, if it did lay on a rock hard enough and it kind of flexed this cover in it's all siliconed on it, it's not going to leak you might not even know there's actually any crack until you pull that cover off at some point and be like oh huh you know didn't know that this has a six speed it does great on the road it does great on these dirt roads it's overall a really good dual sport now if you said, well, which one would you recommend, Mark? The 300R or the 450R? You know, honestly, even though I don't have a lot of time on the 450, so maybe my opinion will change once I get that fork in and just waiting on that leaky fork. Once I get that in, yeah, maybe I will be like, okay, you know, the 450 actually is really good, but a little bit of time I've had on that bike, I've had a lot more on this one. This bike, is a great dual sport seems to have the power seems to be geared just right where you can jump on the road have some good speed but yet go off through the woods and get down in a valley and have great torque in first and second to come back up now it is a fuel injected bike it is running a delphi fuel injection uh, computer system seems to be pretty good i guess they had a totally different system before and that had a lot of issues so then they went with delphi you know name brand and you know they have made improvements like that on, on these bikes i i kind of wish just because safety aspect that they would go with like a, a, a better braking setup like a Nissan or something. I wonder how much that would really cost for them to buy in bulk and just have that on. Or have that as an upgrade that you could buy, you know? Because I would probably consider it if it was priced right. Okay, hey Gary, just toss that in the box. You know, when you ship it to me, uh, you know, 200 bucks more, 300 bucks more. Okay. Now I know some of you are gonna argue and be like, well, you know, 300 bucks, you can't buy, yeah, you can. Certain units, so, like, it, not that expensive for the Nissan XR650R clutch. <laughs> and may, maybe really just do the, the, the clutch unit, you know? And then the, the pistons could still be the Chinese. That way you just have a really good feel up here. And that probably wouldn't add much. I know, again, some of you are gonna be like, Mark, but you know, I look at that KTM site and it, you know, parts and it, it, it said the Brimba, I don't even know what they use on KTM, but it, it said it's going to be 600, but oh no, it wouldn't be 600. That's not how much, that's not how much KTM would pay for that part. <laughs> you know, manufacturer putting that on the bike is not what they pay. That's retail price to you, not manufacturing price 
when a manufacturer is buying, you know, 10,000 units. <laughs> so, I, like I said, I, I wouldn't mind if they just had a deal and tossed that in, in the box. This bike also, we have on it the Forest Service approved fish. They're made in Canada, spark arrestor. So all our bikes have that. So you come out here, you rent it, come out here. Forest Service should not give you any hassle because it is approved, it is stamped, it does have a number on it. And uh, you're, you're good to go. You got a spark arrestor. Personally, I don't believe any forest fire has ever started from a spark from a motorcycle. The likelihood is pretty slim that would occur, that a spark would get that far through the exhaust system out, still be hot enough, and happen to land in something. I, I don't think that's been proven to ever have caused anything. Usually what causes something is, you know, somebody gets something really cherry red and parks on top, whether it's an automobile or a uh, side-by-side or four-wheeler. Again, motorcycles sit pretty high, so it'd be pretty tall grass. And again, I don't know if there's ever been a case, there probably has, there's that many people in the, the world that a fire has started because of it. And that, now as you see, I'm, woohoo, I'm on a Jeep Trail 322, and it goes from Rampart Range down to the Palmer Reservoir. It's a out and back. I used to do this all the time. This used to be one of my favorites in the evening. Wife would come home from work and I would head out. It is programmed pretty lean, so you do occasionally get a pop from the exhaust, but it doesn't really bother me that much. There is a guy that does something with the timing and programming locally, so who knows, might have him go ahead and do that on this at some point and see how the bike runs. So if you're looking around, like I said, it's anmmototoys.com. have links in the description and pin. Yeah, it was affordable rentals and we're kind of working with GPX. They helped us out to, you know, try this idea. So they are, I guess, in a way, invested a little bit into having this work. <laughs> because they'll recommend and we'll recommend them. I'll just be up front with you all. And so far, the people that have run it have seen GPX motos, are looking to buy them, and want to try them. And so far, I've been recommending the 300R because I think this is kind of the best like dual sport-ish bike, especially people coming back into riding, maybe want to just do, do stuff like this and not really do hardcore stuff. I mean, really there's no bike that does it all. You can make a bike do it all. Like Chris Burks can ride an adventure bike on the nastiest, gnarliest single track. But uh, he's not, that's really not the right bike, you know. He's doing it to promote a brand and, and you know, showcase his ability and create videos and, and what have you. <laughs> you got to think about that. Our customers are mainly dual sport people that want to just come do this, not take this, you know, I don't know what is it, like 270 pounds? I forget what I said in my video of weighing it, but, you know, 270 pound bike, 280 pound bike. You're not going to take this and have fun on single track. And if you're a newer rider that's tend to looking at running one of these, I wouldn't advise you to do it. What gear am I in? Fourth. So to give you an idea, fourth gear seems to be pretty good gear. Whoa, <laughs> that was loose. Saved it. <laughs> I'll apologize for the length of the video right now because I know the motor vlogging ones are going to be a little longer because you know there's a lot to say a lot to show and it's about the talking more than the riding but 
kind of gain the benefit that I'm talking while I ride. I don't script anything, so forgive me. I almost went down there. My foot saved me. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, forgive me for the, the long length videos and sometimes the incomplete sentence or something because I don't script my, my moto vlogs. I know a lot of YouTubers do like Colorado Dual Sport would do when he lived here. Maybe he still does. I don't know. We're not buddies or anything. But, you know, people, people script their riding which I can understand it's really hard to stay on subject while you ride and you're seeing things and something happens in front of you and you lose your concentration and you know, it is what it is